So if you see an outcrop, if you're kind of walking on the beach or looking at a cliffside or something like that, that cliff is the result of all of the tectonic processes, all of the surface processes, all of the kind of sea level changes that have happened over millions of years. And if I want to try and work out exactly what's happened during all of that, that time, then I really have to use modelling. And I would say that primarily a lot of my work involves making observations of the Earth's structure and trying to understand what the rocks tell us about environments on Earth back through time. There are quite a lot of gaps in our observational record. A lot of the time we never have a kind of fully 3D view of the Earth's subsurface, what's going on in the geology beneath our feet. Sometimes we might have a number of sparse wells or some outcrops that we can see at the Earth's surface, but very often there are lots of gaps between those kind of data sets. So one way in which I use modelling a lot is to try and kind of fill in those gaps. And in particular, I use modelling to try and learn about what's going on even deeper in the Earth, kind of five, six, seven, down to ten kilometres um, beneath the Earth's surface. And at those depths, it's very difficult to make any direct measurements. So modelling is really uh, kind of the only thing that we can do. So something that I do a lot in my research is something called gravity modelling, where I use the strength of the Earth's gravitational field to try and understand the structure of the crust and its composition. Um, so by doing that, I can kind of take uh, a geometry of the crust and a particular composition, model what its gravitational field strength might be, compare it to what we do see, and in that way I can get to the bottom of that kind of deeper structure. The other way I really use modelling is to try and unravel what's happened to the Earth's surface back through time. So without a time machine, modelling is really the only way to kind of get me there. So for example, let's imagine that this envelope uh, is the seabed in the late Jurassic, so 140 million years ago. And in the Cretaceous, we now have the deposition of sediments onto that seabed, and that's simulated by this uh, pebble. So what we have to do is simulate the removal of those sediments away and see how that surface kind of is restored. Uh, and it's a process called backstripping, which is something that's really common in geoscience. And it's one of our kind of key ways uh, to look at what's happened uh, at the Earth's structure back through time. How I got into modelling, I guess, is probably a little bit strange. So when I was at school, our school didn't really do any computer science. We never really had an opportunity to learn coding or do any kind of um, even kind of very simple modelling uh, at all. Even in my, when I did my undergraduate in Earth Sciences, we didn't really do much on the computer either. So it wasn't until I got to Masters and PhD level that I kind of suddenly woke up to the fact that, okay, I'm a geologist, I spend a lot of time in the field, but numerical modelling can help me a lot. As I mentioned it, it can fill in the gaps in the data set and it can help me unravel what's happened back through time, but it can also help me test my hypotheses. So I don't just have to make observations and come up with an interpretation of what's happening, I can then test it with, with, with modelling. So I think my biggest kind of piece of advice to my teenage self while, it's, while at school uh, would be to to, to take an interest in computer science. It's not just for guys that want to be IT managers or make Xbox games or whatever. Um, computing and coding and numerical modelling factors into lots of different careers. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a full-time modeller, but like me, you know, you, you, you could um, spend most of your kind of time doing something else, doing field work, making observations, doing other things, but the modeling kind of really helps you to kind of push things that bit further. And it's become increasingly important. So when you might kind of think about geology as being done by quite dusty, kind of bearded men out in the field, but modern geology actually involves huge amounts of computing and numerical modeling. So it's really the future. Um, so yeah, that my advice would be to seek out those opportunities and learn how to code um, when I was at school. Thank you.